Laptop computer spins onto the screen, opens, and displays ATP Education Program webinar series, closes, and then spins off the screen. Hi, my name is Kelly Key. I am assistive, an Assistive Technology Coordinator in Barrington, Illinois. I have been in the field of special education for over 25 years, and I've been an administrator, a special education teacher, as well as an Assistive Technology Coordinator. And I'm excited to share with you today some tips for using wait time and a prompt hierarchy. So one of the most important partner skills that you can have when communicating with an AAC user is to provide wait time. So instead of repeating what you said, rephrasing what you said, or prompting the communicator, it is so important that you provide them wait time. So what you do is you wait 10 to 20 seconds, it's kind of the general rule, or more time after you ask a question or make a comment. I mentioned that or more. Um, I have some students that I know that it will take sometimes up to 60 seconds, a full minute of wait time before they respond. And because I know that, I give them that time to process and it's amazing how they will respond. And I have some tips for that. And I like this visual that sometimes that perfect pause is all you need. So wait time allows the communicator to know it's their turn to speak. It provides time for the communicator to process what you said or what you asked. And it allows the communicator then time to think about what they're going to answer and respond. I love this visual that Rachel Langley put together. Uh, it says, pause, relax, breathe. There is power in an expectant pause. And so we'll call it wait time, but we'll also call it an expectant pause, which means you are pausing and you're expecting then the communicator to respond. So here are some tips for, for, for providing wait time. After you ask a question or make a comment, count in your head. So count to at least 15, 10, 15, 20 seconds in your head. Um, a lot of times what I'll do is I literally will tap my fingers out to make sure I'm not even counting too fast or I'll be like one, 1,000, two, 1,000. And again, in my head, because you don't want to say anything or else you may, um, you, you may not be helping the communicator very well by saying it out loud. Um, but again, in your head, take the time to count. Um, some of our, some of our um, staff really like to just even pick a song that they can sing the whole song or sing the whole song twice in their head. And that's how they provide the wait time. So, you know, the happy birthday song or, you know, the song that's just catchy that everybody knows, again, in your head, not out loud, but it just will allow you then to really be providing that time versus cutting it short. And while you're doing that, you want to make sure that you're looking at the communicator because again, wait time, or if you call it an expectant pause, um, you want to make sure the communicator knows that you expect them to give a response. So part of um, giving student supports is using a prompt hierarchy and wait time is a big part of using a prompt hierarchy to promote communication. So if you're not familiar with what a prompt hierarchy is for communication, it is a systematic method of assisting students in the learning and skill acquisition process. Prompts are only used as a support to students when necessary and only for as long as necessary with a plan in place for phasing out all levels of prompts. That's a big part of it right there for as only as, as long as necessary to teach them these skills and that you're expecting communication and then for phasing out at all love all the levels of prompts. Because the key is we do not want to promote prompt dependency. 
We want to help teach the students these skills through the prompt hierarchy and the expectations, but we don't want them to rely on these prompts. We want them to be independent communicators. That's our ultimate goal. There are a few examples of prompt hierarchies. You can Google it. These are two of my favorite that we have based ours off of. Kate Ahern has put together hers. So if you wanna search that and see hers, it's, it's a fantastic prompt hierarchy. I love that it's color coded as well. And this is Rachel Langley's that she's put together based off of um, positive action in Rocky Bay. So she put together this visual as well. We have taken those prompt hierarchies and as a district, our core vocabulary committee has generated our own. The staff felt it was a little too overwhelming with so many steps. It is difficult when they're first starting out to really um, understand each one of the steps and remember the steps until it becomes more natural. And, um, and so this is what we put together for our district based off of research and those other two prompt hierarchies. Um, and again, you can see that uh, it's going to start off with giving the students a reason to communicate. So we have an example here on the right, like you could say, how do you feel or how are you feeling today? And then you give them that wait time. First thing you do is provide wait time. Count to 15 in your head. And then we have here in the box on the right, if the student is new to their device, they're just starting to get exposed to it, you can then jump right to the modeling on the device. So you can jump right to that modeling step, skip the rest, but making sure you still are giving them that wait time before you um, would move ahead to that modeling because we want to give them the opportunity to communicate and see. So after you give wait time, if you do know the student knows the answer or you wanna see, where you're gonna walk them through each one of these steps. This is something that we do have a visual support in all of our classrooms. We practice this hands-on with communication partners before they even do it with the students. Um, so staff do tend to get very well-versed before even working with the students through our professional development in the district because it might seem a little overwhelming if this is the first time you're seeing a prompt hierarchy. So again, give them a reason to communicate, give them wait time. Then the next step would be to provide a, a natural verbal cue. So just as if you were talking to somebody and they didn't respond to you, you can say something like, oh, tell me, how are you feeling? And then you provide that wait time again. I'm not gonna give the full 15 seconds for the sake of time, but just so you know, then the next step would be giving more of a visual cue or a gesture to them. Um, you can wave your finger by the device or the board, or maybe even flash a light towards there or show them a visual picture cue. And then again, that wait time if they're still not responding. And then after that, you can then provide more of a verbal prompt. Um, tell me, or give them a fill in the blank, like I feel. And then again, you wait for that response. If still no response, then you have an option to either model on the border device or um, Lauren Enders, I, I went to one of her sessions and she talked about, um, she calls her hand under hand hop on top. So that's something that we've coined in our district now that we're using. And we absolutely love that phrase. And our students know that phrase is um, if they're not sure what to say, they can hop on top aka hand under hand, and you can help them with answering that question um, and giving them that motor memory of how to say that in the motor planning piece. So again, this is what it looks like. I'm going to show you a video demonstration of it, but this is just what our district has adopted, again, based on the research of some of the other great ones, but you can choose for your district or your classroom wherever you work, what works best for you. I do want to mention, I've mentioned that hand under hand, um, that's critical. Uh, we need, I always share this with our students that we need to be cautious about using a physical prompt with students. We never want to physically take their hand and um, make them say something or take their hand and make them do anything. And Kate Ahern has explained it very well. So I'm quoting her here and how I'm sharing this with you. 
She says, what does a hand on phys full physical cue tell the child? It tells them that we have the right to manipulate their bodies or make them touch or do things, whether they want to or not. And that we have the right to force them to say things just because we want them to say it. So I make sure I share with everybody that I talk about a prompt hierarchy with is use caution. Do not physically take a student's hand and make them say anything. Do not physically take a student's hand and make them do anything. That's why we use hop on top. They have the choice to put their hand on top of yours and then allow you to help them compose or what you think they're going to say. And here's an example. So in this picture, you can see the staff member's hand. They're the, the pointer on the bottom and the student grabs their, their finger and follows along. It really is a nice way for the student to visually gain attention towards the device, as well as again, getting that motor, piece, get motor hand piece down. So use hand under hand or hop on top. And the student then chooses to put their hand on yours. And you should try not to be moving. You never should be moving or controlling their hand. But if they voluntarily put their hand on yours, you can go ahead and compose what you're wondering or thinking maybe they're trying to say. And then they can validate that. Again, this helps with motor planning and gaining attention towards the board or device. And now I'm going to show you a video demo of using our prompt hierarchy in our district. And I use this for our pro professional development. Um, you're going to see that I'm not providing that wait time for the full 15, 20 seconds that I highly recommend that you do. And it's really just for the sake of time, because usually, as I'm sure you all know, it's difficult to have time for professional development. So you want to do as many little snippets as you can, because um, it's hard to find time. So I'm going to go ahead and demo what this looks like. So where did you go? Gave her a reason to communicate, asked her a question. Where did you go this weekend? Tell me. Natural verbal cue. Visual cue or gesture. Tell me. Uh, Verbal prompt. Which hop on top? And the hop on top. And tell me. I. I. Went. Went. And uh, again, just for the sake of the, the video, I'm not doing as long of a wait, wait time as I typically would, but make that wait time exaggerated. If you think it's not long enough, it's not. Try to make it, and, it, and it's painful. I actually, in professional development sessions, I will set a timer for 20 seconds and we'll sit in silence for 20 seconds. And it's, it's, it's somewhat painful, but it is incredible the power of that expectant pause has. So please, if you do anything, take the time to provide that wait time. Thank you very, very much. And I hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you for watching. For more information on the ATP Education Program, please visit our website at atp.nebraska.gov forward slash education or email us at atp.education at nebraska.gov.